Hello, this is Arun Nagdev. I'm at Highland Hospital in Oakland, California. We're going to be talking about some interesting cases in ultrasound, specifically procedural ultrasound. Let's start with our patient today. This is a 50-some-year-old male that came into our ED with a femoral, nerve, femoral neck fracture, excuse me, um, slip and fall, and uh, was in moderate amount of pain, needed a coaptation splint, but was in pretty moderate to severe pain and was not going to be able to tolerate that uh, very well. Orthopedics wanted to see him as an outpatient. So this was a perfect opportunity for a nice interscaling nerve block, which we do commonly on our patients with either proximal head fractures or neck fractures. These work very, very well, give a high degree of comfort and um, very efficacious. Let's talk about this. So first, when we do blocks, uh, I'm going to call this the two-person technique. Again, this is a popliteal block, but the idea being that we allow the resident or the uh, attending to insert the needle, so hand on needle with the probe right here, and then somebody's injecting normal saline into that space to open up the fascial plane, then anesthetic is placed. This allows the user who is doing the block, who is probably not as comfortable as the senior operator, to inject normal saline, be comfortable. Also, you can also inject at very low pressures, and once you open the space up in a correct manner, then you can go ahead and place the anesthetic comfortably. So for this, this is an interscaling nerve block, and this is at the brachial plexus at the interscaling level. So just a little schematic, this is your IJ and your carotid, this is your anterior scaling, this is your middle scaling, and this is your sternocleidomastoid muscle up top. The goal of this block is to bring the needle fairly shallow, you can come in steeper, but I like to go a little shallow, and really pop it in where it drops fluid really between the middle scaling and the brachial plexus right here. So fluid tracking down here is what I really want because I want to give anesthesia to C5 and C6. That's primary, primarily innervation of the shoulder plus the axillary nerve and kind of basic stuff proximally. And this is a schematic, and you can see I kind of talked about the prevertebral fascia right up here. This is, uh, you'll see again the labeling from lateral to medial. This is a brachial plexus with the located in the interscaling groove between the anterior and the middle scaling. Again, your sternocleidomastoid up top and your vasculature much more medial. The goal of the needle is to pop through this and dump an anesthetic in this direction. Um, again, you can see here the needle comes through, breaks through the fascial plane, and then injects anesthetic dripping down. That's actually a little bit of air, which is fine. I like to keep the needle as far away. This is a block needle. We used actually a, uh, a quinky spinal needle for this one um, because we had really good visualization and our block needles were out that day. But this allowed us to come underneath this fascial plane and get a nice block. So again, the goal again is to come through this prevertebral fascia, pop through, dump an anesthetic and get a nice block in this area. The beauty of this is the patient then tolerates the procedure very well, be it a dislocated shoulder, be it a fracture, or even just for splint application um, comfortably and uh, is very usually very happy with these procedures. Again, that same drawing. Again, I think of the prevertebral fascia as almost like a fascia iliaca when you do the femoral nerve block. This is our patient who is very happy and you can tell in the COVID area uh, with the mask on, he is very happy that he received this block and wanted to express his high degree of gratitude. Great, by all means, get the nerve block. <laughs> Small little tiny pitch, much, much relief pain. So that was a nice, um, nice Yelp review for our procedure and uh, that's about it. Thank you.